Hello, and thank you for joining the Tuesday edition of Journalist Hangout. I'm Ayodili Uzubaku. Today on the program, Governor Akiridulu orders headsmen to vacate Odo Forest Reserve within seven days, bans night grazing, movement of cattle within cities on, on highway, and later on the show, PTF says one of five persons test positive to COVID-19 as total cases in Nigeria rise to 112,004 after recorded 1,617 new infections. I'll be hanging out with Babajide Kolade Otitoju and Mayor Akipelu. So if you're ready, let the hangout start now. Glad to have you join us. Following rising cases of kidnapping and other criminal activities in Ondo State, Governor Ruti Miyakiridolu has ordered headsmen to vacate forest reserves in the state within seven days. At a meeting with Hausa, Fulani and Ibira communities in Akure on Monday, Governor Akiridolu also banned night grazing and prohibition, prohibited movement of cattle within the cities and on highways. Is this the right thing to do? Let's share this with you. The recent shooting of the Deputy Registrar of the Federal University of Technology, Akure, raised serious concerns, increasing cases of kidnapping and other crimes, pointing to suspected others, dictated the response by the state government with this interactive meeting. You people in this room, let us say that you are the criminals. Then we have the belief that some of you will know these criminals. It was not a time for long speeches as Governor Akiri Dulu went straight to the point. And all our forest reserves are to be vacated by armed men, except you are there locally, because farmers who are, are entity are registered to farm there. We must, we will not, we will not discriminate. If you are doing a legitimate job there, we will register you. You pay, you do it. He also had lord underage grazing of cattle. Underage grazing is banned. We have said so. All of us agreed. We are messing around. We are saying movement of cattle with these cities and highways is prohibited. We have said so. And we have said it, all of us have agreed that underage grazing of cattle is outlawed. Leaders of the Aousa, Fulani, and Ibira communities promised to call their people to order. Every corner we place Fulani Day in October, do meeting, follow the same government we will do. We talk in no, as therefore directed security agencies in the state to enforce its directive in order to get the safety of lives and property. Ayodeji Moradi, your TVC News, Akure. Thanks to our Ondo State correspondent there, Ayodeji Moradi, your my namesake. Now, Babajide, I noticed something, this kind of trend, like within APC governors, it's always very difficult for them to speak out like this and take decisive moves when it comes to a sensitive, sensitive issue like this. Now, Governor Luarati Makeredolu is coming out to say no night grazing and headsmen must not be seen some particular time around the states and effectively even talked about, you know, young headsmen that most of them should go to school and he was very, very blunt and frank about this. Yes, uh, it was not... Um, as if these moves had not been made in the past. It's just that um, the directives were not complied with. So he merely used the uh, opportunity of yesterday's uh, uh, town hall meeting to emphasize the need to obey those directives that were made after he had met with those stakeholders uh, in the past. For example, in the course of the meeting, he, he, he looked at the chairman of Mieti in the state, Mame Bilo, he said, you come here. We have talked about this thing in the past, Mieti Allah. Mm. And you promised, you admitted that there are bad eggs within your fold. 
you promise to do something about it. You promise to identify those bad eggs so that this whole nonsense will stop. But we are still having cases of people being attacked, criminals masquerading as headsmen, you know, still killing people, still kidnapping people. That's what got the governor angry. Because I remember also that there was a similar meeting like this that the commissioner of police in the state had with um, the Fulani community uh, in the state. And by themselves, they admitted that, yes, there are criminal elements masquerading as headsmen. And the commissioner said, identify those people so that we can move in and serve justice. It's the same thing that the governor is saying. There are innocent people uh, amongst them, among the headsmen, who are doing their legitimate uh, duty. But there are criminally minded people who are not headsmen, but simply posing as headsmen mm. and infiltrating the forest. So the governor is saying, no, if people must stay in our forest, we must document them. The era of undocumented immigrants running riot in our country, posing as Nigerians and simply killing our people, has to stop. Look at, what, look at what's going on in Okyogun. Look at what's going on in Okyogun. Even big, a big time farmer was killed. You kidnap people, they pay ransom, you still go ahead and kill them. kill them. It has to stop. I, I looked at, you know why I'm particularly concerned? I looked at the um, um, security alarm that the Americans sent to their people about Nigeria. Hmm. All of those states that they want people not to go to, there's no Southwest state there. If the killing of people by criminal headsmen, if the killing of people by so-called bandits, you know they killed the uh, you know, those states, the other yes, the first yes. class. If mm. it continues, mm. don't be surprised if um, uh, maybe next month or uh, any time uh, whatsoever, the Americans come up with an security report and, and you see one mm. of the mm. Southwest states state listed. Southwest. That is why the governors of the Southwest should stop playing politics about security. I've said it before, I've already suggested to them, don't play, when it gets to your door, you will know that your judgment had been very bad, had been issue. If you want to uh, encourage Amotekun, go ahead, do it, and do, take your decisions decisively. Protect your people. Look at what this governor said. He said, I was voted into office not only to execute projects, but to provide security for lives and property. That's vintage Akre Dolu. Mm. He said it all. Shooting from the hip, speaking <coughs> straight from his heart. My God. That is one thing that I like <laughs> about him. I don't mm. like hypocritical people. Mm. Just let you know that this is a problem. Solve it decisively. That's what we lack. Mm. Decisive. No one. It's called a games reserve. It's not supposed to be a place to harbor criminals. Mm. What are they doing there? Mm. We know these problems are there. We are reluctant to take the kind of steps that will put an end to the problem. Many people look on your state and on those states has been, you know, lately in the last uh, few days has been the worst hits. And he uh, cited the Lufon, it's, uh, the Futa, um, the registrar, deputy registrar of uh, Futa was also killed. And in on those states right now, when you go to, uh, when you go to all the, this road, very, very dangerous right now. Kidnappers and bandits, they are having like a field day. I'm encouraged. But I'm not impressed. I'm not impressed because there was a time that there was this, it was more like a pandemic. Every time within Ondo and Oyo State, there were a lot of kidnappings and killings. And it got to a stage that the Southwest governors met and had, uh, had a security meeting and also had an enlarged meeting where they brought in a lot of stakeholders. And it was because of that that it was decided to form a Motekun. But for whatever reason, either by act of omission or commission, most of them didn't, 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 didn't really do the kind of thing we expected them to do with Amatekun. Because the essence of Amatekun was to stop that. Because we knew that the so-called headsmen 
had become, because we have to be clear about it. There are two categories of people here. There are traditional yes men who roam about with their cattle, they have things to do, and they are meanings to farmers. Mm -hmm. But there are some people who are yes men but who are more or less criminals. Mm -hmm. You understand? They, 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 they rely on armed robbery and kidnapping. And it is embarrassing. Basically foreigners. Yes, it is embarrassing that so full any yes men will come to Yoruba land and be kidnapping our people and be doing armed robbery and will be paying ransom. And our governors are not, what Akere Dolu said, very nice, I'm encouraged, but it was the same thing that the governors said they were going to do. How many of those governors have really started Amatekun in their domain? What is the funding of Amatekun? Is Amatekun doing the kind of thing we expected them to do? Because we thought that with Amatekun, we'll be able to, to slow down this insecurity that was happening in Yoruba land. But along the line, some of the governors are paying lip service to Amoteco. Those who have started it, they are not well funded. So the kidnappings and armed robberies still continue. And it is shameful that people, the other day I read the story of, um, just about some days ago, I read the story of this engineer who went to a boy state with the wife and the kids. Mm. The kids were traveling for the first time. Mm. And he said, okay, let me visit my in-laws in a boy. They were coming back on a Kure. Akure or Expressway, they were kidnapped. They paid two million. He mm. mentioned somebody that was there that paid five million. Mm. You understand? Mm. Where they were, mm. how and why they were beating them every day. And he confirmed that they were full any young, full any criminals. Mm. That is unacceptable. Meti Allah should be able to know those who are their people, who are the, these real, authentic S men. You understand, they are doing the job. And then they will be able to they should be able to collaborate with police and the security agencies to be able to fish out these criminals who have turned the, the, um, the forest reserve to their hideouts. Okay, we'll be joined by Donald Ojogo, the Commissioner for Information in those states. He joins us via Skype. Thank you, Mr. Ojogo. Thank you, Ayo. What is happening in Nodo states? Can you give us the security situation in your state right now? Uh, what? Well, thank you, Ayo. I, the security situation in Ondo State is, is not different from, it's not different from uh, what obtains in every other state, uh, particularly in the Southwest. I am not in a position to give you detailed security reports, as it were, but the ten security situation in the, in the state is, as, is the same thing as uh, what every other person in the Southwest will experience. It's getting to a stage that people no longer sleep with their two eyes closed. So it's really a very disturbing scenario. Like uh, Mayor uh, painted it, we, when we thought that we, uh, we were battling with a pandemic, we have another pandemic which is getting more debilitating. That is kidnapping. It's almost like a pandemic, getting worse than COVID. So we are in very perilous times. If care is not taken, it may get out of and, and very urgent and courageous steps have to be taken in the light of what the governor of Fundo State had just done yesterday. Give us more insight into the riot act read by Mr. Governor on Monday. Well, if you call it riot act, you are, you, uh, where everybody, anyone is free to give uh, interpretation to to the very clear, unambiguous statement the governor made yesterday. He didn't just wake up one day to make those statements. That was not the first meeting, and I believe it wasn't even the second meeting that the governor held with the leadership of the Aousa Fulani community. In some of these meetings that were held, it was agreed, even among the leadership of the Mieti Allah, that yes, there are criminal elements who are hiding under very, uh, very legitimate businesses, under our leadership, that they were going to cooperate with government and security agencies to fish them out. But between that period and now, it's not as if the thing had abated. It had not abated. Rather than abating, it is accentuating, which is very disturbing and dangerous. So the governor as the chief security officer, even though operationally, governors have their own inhibitions in exercising their rights as chief security officers uh, in their various states. He has a duty to protect the people. And that is one of those things he has done. So it's not a new thing that the man has done. It's not a riot act. But it's what was needful 
was done and at the most appropriate time yesterday. Are you confident that um, rising from yesterday's meeting, the Meheti Allah leadership will turn in this uh, undesirable elements who are kidnapping and killing people? Are you confident this time? Well, that, that is our prayer. Because it, it, will be, it, will, it, it will be to the general good, to the good of the leadership of the Meheti Allah, the Aousa Fulani community, and the people of Ondo State, if there is collaboration between these stakeholders to ensure that criminal elements are identified and weeded out of society. But it will also be more dangerous if the genuine businessmen, the genuine Meheti Allah people, those who are genuine, that, who are doing their very legitimate businesses, will tend to inherit the criminal activities of hoodlums and murderers who are hiding under Meheti Allah. It will be a very dangerous scenario. So the earlier the leadership of the Meheti Allah uh, group identifies and fishes out these criminal elements, the better for the people of the state and the better for Meheti Allah. It will be very good if they express much and display much of uh, commitment and understanding with the state government. How prepared is, finally, how prepared is uh, the uh, Moteco from on those states? How ready are they to actually um, checkmate the activities of these um, bandits? In the first place, Amoteku was not Amoteku was not set up as a as a combat uh, operations outfit. It was set out to collaborate with the conventional security outfits to ensure that crime and criminality are reduced to the barest minimum. But also, they will require the commitment and encouragement of every stakeholder, including Mieti Allah, for them to be able to operate effect effectively and maximally. So I can say confidently that Amateku is, with its intentions, the motive behind the setting up of Amateku, are clear and unambiguous. So it is not a confrontation outfit, as it were, that it is, uh, as it is being painted elsewhere outside the Southwest. It is there to ensure that crime is reduced. It is there to ensure that criminals are weeded out of the entire Southwest. Those who have no criminal tendencies have no business to be afraid. Those who have no criminal motives have no reason to be afraid of the activities of Amotekun in the Southwest. Donald Ojugo. Ojugo, thank you, Commissioner for Information from um, on those states. Babajile, since the declaration of this Amotekun within the Southwest states, I discovered that a lot of politics and um, it has been the noise was whittled down the power as in so many things inside the all progressive congress let's take for example i don't know what is the situation with Lagos states talking about amotekun i don't know what is the situation with ogun states talking about amotekun i'm aware that my friend amitolu shito is the head of amotekun in oshu states and that outfit has been launched set up and all your states, they've set up their own, it has been launched. Um, I don't know about Ekiti State. I think John Kai, if I mean, has set up something and they're going to reel out um, days ahead. I've seen, read a lot of about Ekiti State and Motekun, but it's not all the states in the Southwest that have effectively keyed into this thing. I, well, the, the truth is, both Lagos and Ogun State had their security outfits. Okay. Lagos State had the neighborhood uh, watch. 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 Ogun State also had this. I can't remember the name, but mm. that they, they had they had something. So okay. for those states, they felt well. They had something that they could fall uh, fall back on, and they were not um, yes. exactly going to take the same steps that Odo or Yor and Oshun took. But the truth is. In Oshun State, Amoteko has recorded some giant rights. The governor has been committed from the first day, you know. Mm. Um, he was approached. They tried to talk him out of it, discourage him, you know, but the governor was focused that this was what he wanted. And the same thing with uh, the man with the white beard. He had shown 
commitment to the Amotekun cause from the beginning. That was why he was even named Governor General of Amotekun uh, uh, at that time. Mm. He had bought so, so passionate about he it. He had bought the uh, motorbikes for them, the vehicles that they needed, and um, even the launch was with so much. Several so the launch was with so much fanfare. Of course, he was the one. He provided leadership among the governors. Mm. And the in the end, hand, when the likes of uh, Bola Metinobu intervened, people now saw clearly that look, there is a need to have this. And the IG too, uh, his, his attitude changed. You know, to to the chairman. When I interviewed him in March, I, I asked him about Amotaku. Amotaku. You know, I said this thing is necessary. It's just mm -hmm. to complement the efforts of the police. It's not an alternative to the police. People mm -hmm. should stop seeing it as an alternative to the police, well, anyway. including so-called southwesterners, mm -hmm. who do not know that they could, in, in fact, fall victim of kidnapping. Because for many Nigerians, until evil comes to their door. They do not recognize the need to prepare to ward away evil. So, for some of those people who, when it is necessary to engage their brains, they refuse to engage their brains and simply uh, imagine that there is no I think problem. This is, um, Shea, this, is no, um, uh, this is a time to take our security seriously. I I I, I can understand why the governor. Has spoken this way. Remember, he was going to be a victim of criminal headsmen. Yes, His yes, convoy he was attacked. Was attacked. Yeah. Yes, yes. So, if anyone feels strongly that look, we we need this, it has to be this man mm. because he, 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 he was attacked himself. Mm. So, and the forest reserves that he's talking about, they are located in uh, on do not. Mm. The Akoko Akoko area, site, yes. and this this is the uh, part of the state where mm. this thing is rampant. So. The truth is, yes, there are criminals across all um, um, ethnicities. I don't want a situation in which we keep saying Fulani headsmen, Fulani headsmen. But the truth is, there are criminal headsmen. These criminal headsmen must, must stop posing as headsmen. We have to identify them and call them by what they do. Bandits. They are not, they are not headsmen. Someone, you, you are not, you've not seen him with cattle. Yeah. He stands on the road simply to kidnap people. He's not an, he's not a, a headsman. He's just posing as one. So we'll call him what he is. He's a criminal. He's a, he's, yeah. he's, he's a bandit. bandit. That's yeah. why some of us prefer to call them bandits. People don't understand. Because he's a bandit who behaves in that way. The bandit by nature is nomadic. Is on, is on the highway that he operates. A bandit is not a burglar. That's why we choose to call them bandits. That's what they are. They should stop smearing the name of genuine people who are hardworking, who are involved in livestock business. And that's the reason why the Amotekun leadership should pro produce these people. Or stop giving them any form of cover. Don't come near us. We don't want you. You are giving us a bad name. That is uh, what they should be doing. Mi Mieti That's Allah. what Mieti Allah. Mieti, okay. The governor told him, he said, you promised us in the past that you will fish out these people. Amongst, uh, but the Mieti rights. Allah people are in a position to do that. That's what really we are want, saying. Yes, if they really want to they do too it. have said, yes, there are criminals posing as headsmen. Of course, they, they know. Among some of these people, they too have been victims of these people because a lot yeah. of cattle rustling is actually mm. done by these, yeah. these mm. fellows. Mm. So they too are victims even of the criminals posing as headsmen. That's why it's important that they work with government, that they work with the security agencies to put an end to this nonsense. Mayor, if you see the way they operate, these guys are so vicious. No, after the, kidnapping, yeah, so yeah. after collecting ransom, they still go ahead to kill. You know why? The reality is that the bandits that are operating in the northwest, mm. a lot of them have migrated south. Wow. And those are the people. Because, like you said, they are not headsmen. They don't have cattle. What they do, basically, is just that they happen to come from that, that geopolitical zone. But they are basically criminals who, that was the thing they were doing in Niger. That's the same thing they were doing in Samara. That's what they think they were doing in the northwest. It's just that some of them are moved down south. And they seem to know, 
You know, it's because it's the same style. If you look at those bandits, you know, they move from forest, come into the cities, operate and move back into the forest. So these guys use the game reserve as the hideout, and then they come to the highway to kidnap people. And that is more reason why we should not accept that. We cannot accept it because they don't have anything. They don't. They, it, I read, they are not even Nigerians. So yes, I read the story of that engineer, and I felt I was angered because I felt, look, how can some people? He said most of them are in their in their teens. Mm. That most of these guys are in their teens, and that they beat them for five days straight. That they even beat the wife more than him. How can you do that and to they people? Didn't give them food. And at the end of the day, that they didn't give them food for those, they were there for three days. That they didn't give them food for those three days. They were giving them stream water to drink. That is stream water. And they still collected two million from them. How can we allow some people to be doing that? And we have government. And the thing is, I, you know, I, was, I saw a video uh, that went viral, uh, reportedly shot in Zamfara, where those bandits. Uh, um, abducted a woman and were raping her. And the woman was saying, no, they are worried that I'm married. They were not bothered. They were Even not this bothered. woman, they, the man said they wanted yes. to rape the yeah, wife, but, but, but that the wife lied that she was three that months was pregnant. pregnant. Yes, yes. That's why they left her. That's why they and they her. would do it in your presence. Mm. So for the people, no. for the people who, who are not concerned about this problem, they should just pray that it doesn't come to them. Because we have people who think that, look, we are just making noise about a security problem. We are concerned because it could be any of us. It could be. The other day, when you, when you and I were discussing about traveling to, to Kogi, yeah. and you told me when you were going for, yeah. I think any uh, uh, father's uh, funeral, Father. and you told me how you had to engage security and all that. Honestly. Look, even when we engage security, it's just mere formality. Yeah. Mm. Just, could, just to give you confidence to be able to they travel. Firepower. They could kill all of the people with yeah. you. Yeah. Look, at, look at the emir of uh, 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 um, Kaurana Moda that they attacked. Look at how many policemen they killed. Mm. You know? So it's just formality when you have two or three policemen. It's just to give they, you confidence to be able to embark on that journey. Mm. The truth is, Not that they can the truth protect is, you. Even no. in, the, in that state, when they are locked up, they are inside the car, the doors are shut. Maybe they even wound up the, the, this thing, the windows. The, the, the criminals they are standing advantage. by the road, they are in yes. a, 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 an advantageous position. position. Yeah. Look at that billionaire, I think, an Ambra billionaire or so that they killed, that they found uh, uh, them somewhere in the east. He had security people. The security people were slaughtered. You know, you know because why? Once you know why? Because their style, their you, style, you their style is to, their style is to shoot indiscriminately. They don't care. They just when they when they emerge from that bush, they start shooting from that bush. And no, when you just well, even if you have security people inside your car, you understand. When before they start they shooting, down, yeah, when they start they shooting down. indiscriminately, it's for you to stop. And in that time, they could and if they know that, that you have a security man, they go for that security man. The security security driver. Driver. Okay. Yes. All right. We'll take this breather. When we come back, we'll talk more. It's still your program, Journalist Angers. We'll be right back after this time out. Please don't go away. It's your multi award winning program, Journalist Angers, reaching you from the TV station of the year, Television Continental. And we are reaching you live from Lagos, Nigeria. And we're looking at the spread of insecurity around the country. And um, but actually, talking about the response of our security agencies, how the police, those people start to be responsible to you know, um, ensure the lives. The, uh, Protection, of, protection lives. of lives and properties. Mm. And so far, it has not been encouraging. The police authority, that even, I mean, the policemen around us, they are even victims of these kidnappers. Mm. They pay ransom yeah. yes. from time to time. Yeah, and imagine okay. um, bandits killing assistant commissioner of police, yes. bandits killing the DSS adopting officers. DSS officers. Mm -hmm. yes. In Casino, they kill the DSS officer, senior DSS officer. So the thing is, it's everyone's business now. Hmm. Everyone's business. Every patriotic Nigerian's business. Because we've reached the point now that some people imagine themselves to be more patriotic than the rest of us because we choose to say the truth. 
and they are genetically wired to lie. Mm. You understand? But mm. well, that's not our own genetic uh, makeup. Mm. So they now imagine that they are more patriotic than us. All is not well in yeah. terms of security. But inwardly, inwardly, they have their regrets. They know. They have some their of regrets. them, their families have been victims. Yes, but they, they will not talk about it because they are wired to lie. That's not, I don't think that for a man who is wired to lie, I don't think there's any, any intervention, any spiritual intervention that can make that person change. The Yorubas will say, A man who, who is a compulsive liar, is wired to lie. Honestly, there is no spiritual remedy. And we have a lot of them in our country. Yeah, there is no spiritual remedy. And we have a lot of them in our country. And they are the people who hate the people who say the truth. The people in government like people who say the truth because Do they not also see anything they use, bad. They use uh, some of what we say to try and achieve better governance. Mm. Mm. But the psychophant, psych, the psychophant is not interested in good governance. They're not interested. He's interested in who, how his pocket gets lined. For the, looking at the other side. For the unwholesome job that he does. Mm. For okay. the aberrant job that he does. <laughs> but the people in government, they know that it is important to get this feedback, and they get it, and they watch this program, and they do things that we tell them sometimes they need to do. They may mm. not do everything, mm. but we see signs that they do things. And we are saying now, because it's important, that the president has said this year he will defeat um, a banditry. Mm. This year he will defeat Boko Haram. Okay, I have we can only support the government mm. to achieve that. I, I have my first caller. To that. Mm -hmm. um, Abdul is calling us from Kaduna State. Thank you for joining us, Abdul. Good evening. Good, Good evening, evening, Abdul. Well done. Good evening, uh, Mr. Babajide. Good nice evening. analysis. Thanks. Okay, sir. Yeah. I would like to just uh, just uh, highlight some few points to contribute to this uh, important uh, topic. Okay. Um, the most important thing is that this kidnapping or banditry is happening and uh, there is a lot of uh, transfer of funds from one, and mainly they you know, spend money to the, kid, to the kidnapper to live. I believe that we have, uh, we have a bank, central bank, which normally traces DVN or transactions. So what are they doing? Train, train, they should find a way in tracing how money goes from one account to the other. Even where ransom has been paid, pay and probably they pay cash. the Some of them pay cash. They pay cash. They pay cash. They, they will tell you where to go. Put the ransom. Abdul, they don't. They don't collect yeah, money. They won't go through wire. They won't receive money electronically. Okay, even if they receive money electronically, there is a way that this thing can be traced. How? Be what we are saying, they pay cash. Abdul, they pay cash. They tell you where to go and drop the cash. Look, if you read Sometimes this, they kill the person that drops the cash to. If you read the, sto the story that Mayor was talking about, yes. he said in his presence they counted all of the money. Yeah. And they that waited they to count the but, money. But there is a kidnapping that asked. happened last year. There is a kidnapping that happened last year that I read that Bitcoin was used in the transaction. Bitcoin was used okay. in the transaction. Yeah, but that must be an exceptional that case. Was yes, not an yes. You can't even trace Bitcoin, though. Mm. Yes. The but most, most of the, the, most of the ones we are talking about uh, now, but this they, one, they want one cash. cash. Mm. All these people, yeah, they, don't they won't tell you to go to your bank and transfer money. Mm. You know, and uh, there was even the case of this guy, the, the guy in, um, in um, this guy that, um, the big time kidnapper in, uh, Evans. in Jalingo. In a, oh, in um, uh, Wadume. Wadume. Mm. He got the persons, he got, he, he, he got about 120 million from one transaction. Mm -mm. He got the BVN, the BVN of the, of the victim. Of the victim. Collected the victim. He first withdrew 100 million. Then went and got about 25 million more. That's why, and in the, and in the end, he still killed the victim. That's why his case is particularly bad. There has to be a closure. Mm -hmm. All of to the persons case. involved, yes. Military. Whether they are policemen or soldiers, they should be fished out. Because if we don't do that, 
we will not solve this problem. That means we are deceiving ourselves. Hmm. Now to be fished out, let everyone be punished for being involved in uh, banditry. Then we have to put pressure on our government, on our governors, to realize that the protection of lives and property is the primary duty of government. You know, there was a time that the thing went down a little bit, but now it is it is it is up, up again. again. Mm. Yes, it is up again. Kidnapping and, and harm robbery, and because it is it is it people is are getting away it with is it. unacceptable yeah. that people cannot travel in within the yes. geopolitical zone. You cannot travel. The Akure or War Expressway is the kidnap people there every day. That is unacceptable. Especially people going from the north. Many roads, many, that is many of our highways. Many of our are highways that are like that. It's unacceptable. Our governments have to know that that is not acceptable. They have to do something about it. For the police, the police is overwhelmed. Hmm. We have to accept that reality. They are overwhelmed hmm. because if they say that there is kidnapping within a particular highway and it is rampant on that particular highway, I'm not a police officer, but I think that in looking at the political um, architecture, uh, uh, security architecture of that area, you will have people who will do reconnaissance, you will have people who, who will be like a response force who can, who can walk on that highway. But people, they, because it is ridiculous that the man said that when they came to pay, you understand, across the expressway, they counted the money before they were released. Mm. On the road, mm. They counted the money mm. before they were released. Julie, you discover that people, in, in spite of this, mm. People report to the police, but when they call for ransom, and you will still go and pay for that ransom. As in, most out of every 10 kidnaps, the kidnapping cases, if you, if you happen to still get the victim back, you discover that eight would have paid. Yes. And it's making that industry such a lucrative industry. Yes. And sometimes when people pay, police will claim that they re secure release. Look at that man. The man came out to say, no, we paid. Yeah. The same thing with that uh, Obodo, the footballer, based in Italy. Mm, mm, mm. Yeah. He, he paid for Obodo. ransom, yes. and, uh, and uh, police claimed that they were the ones who released, deceiving themselves. Hmm. So as long as people are paying ransom, they will see it as a big uh, uh, business venture to remain in. Okay, it is. It's a lot it's more so lucrative, lucrative than, than arm robbery. Yes, and it the, is. And the, the risk element is low. Low. Hmm. So this is the thing. We have a big task on our hands. We have to tell ourselves the truth. And government, because these things like that come to stay, government has to change the narrative and it has to be aggressively done. Technology can help us a lot. We talk about the technology to, to even trace cause and uh, locate where people are. Yeah. But I have said it before that it should be across all the state commands. A situation in which uh, you, something happens in uh, Kebi, you call uh, Abakiari. Another one happens in Oyo, is the same Abakiari and his team that you call. You call. Mm -hmm. Let the state commands have the technology be to be able to do the same thing. In their states, yeah. yes. And they should train more officers. And we can, even that kind of equipment, get a lot of our businessmen who have uh, the resources, mm. even if we are going to give them tax holiday, let them help us in providing the kind of equipment, sophisticated hybrid equipment that the police needs. Mm. That's what that's, that's, the, that's the way to go. Okay, moving on now. The COVID-19 pandemic is closer to you and than ever. According to the chairman of the Presidential Task Force on COVID-19, one of five Nigerians tested last week returned positive, one of five. The country has now has a total case of 112,004 now. And according to, after recording 1,617 new infections on Monday, where do we go from here? I, it's, um, it's everywhere now, Jide. This thing is, I don't know, a lot of people are home. They, have, they think they have malaria fever, but they're down with COVID. And we've not tested enough. Out of 200 million Nigerians, we've not tested, <laughs> we've, not, we've not done up to um, 300,000 tests. Well, we, we just have to keep working hard. Um, I'm sorry, people are worried that the PTF is talking in this manner, yet we can't get the communications ministry to stop the, the registration 
Today is uh, their then. deadline for some other of this network. Let's see if they are going to disconnect no, the subscribers on their we network. Don't us, so. I don't, uh, that is even their problem. But we should be able to ask ourselves whether it makes sense to continue to encourage the gathering of Nigerians at various ports at a time when we are preaching social distancing. Because it is not just the, the spread of this thing does not just happen in churches or nightclubs or strip bars. We know that where people are gathered, like uh, the centers we are I know, um, like the Keja Center. I keep seeing that uh, picture every there day. There is no now. way, there is no way. That I am not going to go there. I'm and not, we not go. I'm, I don't have any. Because it's like I'm not going you, to go you, there. you can see death. You can see death in front of you. And you are walking towards him like somebody uh, who has a, a thick hammer against death. Newspapers, no. everybody, they use it as uh, their cover. So, we have, every so day. You people will ask, what really is the problem? In the Keja. They are is, populated. The truth is, there is a need beyond suspending that NIN and resuming when this whole thing has come down. That's the sensible thing for government to do. Suspend it. No one is bigger than the state. The minister is not bigger than the state. They've got to be able to tell him that, look, yes, you have uh, bright ideas, but we can do this later. Mm. Because for some of the people that we are trying to convince, they are telling us that a few same okay. government This is a typical NIM center now. Yes. A few same government. So is there anything like social the, distancing Even here? the child. Most look of them the are, wearing their, they are wearing their face mask, but the social distancing... A lot distancing, are not even wearing it. See, when you say... A lot of them are not even wearing masks. So how many people are wearing it? Even from the video the that you see. Here, then the, look at the little kid. Mm. You know? So the thing is, we have to first deal with that. And then there are other measures that we can take. You look at a country like Rwanda. Rwanda, yes, Rwanda had a very effective way of um, addressing this problem without necessarily shutting down the economy. Mm. So it's a balance between life or lives and livelihoods. That's what they are doing. Once you are coming into their country, you, you first do a test over there, a test negative before coming to their country. Once you get into their country, they've already sent you a list of designated hotels where they will put you. So once you come in, they have designated transportation mm. and drivers that are tested routinely. They take you and take you to their own designated hotel. So that they can pay When points. you get to that designated hotel, you can't move an inch. You can't move an inch until they have tested you again. It's like an isolation So center. they will now bring you, between 12 to 24 hours, they will bring you the, report, the results. So it is when you have now passed, or you, you, are, you, uh, you tested positive, um, negative. And negative, negative, that they will now allow you to go to your own preferred hotel. Mm. So from your own preferred hotel, the... Uh, what is it called? The, the, uh, the designated uh, transportation will be taking you to designated tourism site because they know that tourism is crucial to their revenue generation. Yes. So they are not prepared to stop the uh, revenue from tourism. But they have made up their minds to ensure that everybody is checked. Now that there is an uh, uh, increase based on this new strain, in Kigali, there is nothing like designated hotels anymore. There is nothing like going to your own preferred hotel. They will pick you with their own, <laughs> put you in their own place. Quarantine you. Well, yes, that's where you will stay. Mm. And they will monitor you. And when you are going at the airport, they will do another test for you, which will show over there to, say, to show that you are. So we have to be aggressive about people coming into our country because they are the, the, a lot of this thing is spread through air travel. How did they even get here in the first place? Through air travel. So you can see that's their own approach is to focus tremendously on people coming in. So yeah. we don't have to close the schools are open in, in, in Rwanda. We don't have to close every sector of the economy. Mm -hmm. But you can pinpoint some sectors that you give uh, the right attention. If I want to yes, ask, people I are dying. Am, I am scared. Mm -hmm. I'm really scared because a lot of people that I know, 
are either out of, are getting out of COVID or they are presently experiencing COVID. It is, it is spreading in a way that is so scary. I talk to people every day and they tell me, oh, I have COVID, or I've just came out of COVID, or I'm still recuperating after COVID. And I, I think, I agree that we cannot shut down the economy. We cannot afford it. What we did last year, if we do that again, we'll run into serious problem. But mm -hmm. there are certain things that we can do. For example, if I'm the governor of Lagos, for example, I will not allow parties of any kind. Mm -hmm. he's, not, he's, not, he's not doing protocols. He's not telling people to To enforce it is the protocols. problem now. No, 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 to observe protocols. Mm -hmm. Because when you tell people to do parties and that they should have uh, maybe 25% of the capacity okay, okay, okay. of that. They should not just allow, they not, they should not allow physical distancing. For maybe another one month, for example, let's not have any parties at all. Let us not have any nightclub. Let us not have lounges. You understand? Let us not have church services. Let us not have mosque. In Rwanda, no church services. Let us not have no yeah. mosque. Mm. Yeah, I, I agree that students can still go to school, but we'll put a lot of, um, we'll put protocols in place to protect those kids, you understand? Mm -hmm. But the, the economy will still, we will allow people to do business because if we shut down, we will run into serious problem. You understand? But it is important that we have to accept that we are in a major, major crisis. A lot of people have, and if you see, if you hear stories coming from, from the isolation center, it's scary. And the new strain of COVID, you know, comes with, um, with um, breathing problems. So almost everybody that is in hospital now, that is hospitalized, needs, um, needs oxygen. So there's shortages of oxygen, and it's getting worse. So we have to do something, and we have to force people to, protect, to, to respect their life. Because people are still doing parties. And just, if, if you look at the, the recent deaths around, most of them got this COVID during December because of the wedding parties and all that. The, 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 the increase in the parties in December caused this major spike. So, and we have the problem of traveling with it because the, to, traveling is the, is, the, is the major, is the major, is the major, is the super spreader for this COVID. So, mm. since we cannot do that, we can put in, we can put, we can put um, some guidelines where people will do testing, that they will test here, they will isolate and all that. Do you some, some people still believe, some religious leaders, they still believe that this is a kind of onslaught against um, some religion, like, like Christian leaders on the 31st of December, bread reactions, I was reading their reactions and everything. It's a sieve, it's a do or die thing to gather on that 31st before the, the, the new year. Now, if government is, <coughs> government should try and um, get these people so that they can sell the campaign to them because it's not going to be effective if churches and other all these organizations are not keen into the non-pharmaceutical intervention created by the government no it's not as if they are not even keen to it churches have um, uh, come up with uh, physical distancing measures in front of churches you now have um, um, running water or in some cases uh, water sanitizers, water in uh, big um, uh, buckets, you know, where you can wash your hands. So it's not as if they are not keen to those um, safety protocols. But they don't want the um, stipulated number that um, the PTF uh, has come up with, and they don't even want churches to be closed for any reason. It's a peculiar reality in our country that we put greater accent on religiosity. Mm -hmm. I've called it before impotent religiosity because a lot of the people who actually um, announce themselves as men of God, as uh, God-loving people, in reality, they are not God-loving people. There are people who can't even show mercy. And even watching God. people on the throes of death, they can't show mercy. But we are dealing with a disease that is killing even pastors. Mm. You saw the, uh, at least mm. a pastor died the, mm. uh, the other day. So people cannot come and use religion uh, just because you want your churches filled to the brim. You can't stand. Even if for a lot of them, the argument is, look, the rate of uh, fatality is too low. 
for the extreme measures that we are coming up with. But one life, one life matters. Mm -hmm. to, it's, a, it's a fatalistic way of uh, reasoning to say, okay, because not, uh, not so many people die, therefore uh, these measures are not necessary. I agree. In Rwanda now, no churches, no parties. They focus, oh, they are tourism, and we must make money as a country. Tourism can happen, but they know that it will be difficult to check, I mean, and get churches to abide by the directives, or the mosque to abide by the directives. So the, the president says, no, no churches for now. If I know the pressure that people like the governor of Ogun State faced, hmm. there was nothing they didn't call these governors. Oh, they are antichrist. They are this. They are enemies of God. Not, so when they eventually agreed, it was due to so much pressure because mm -hmm. for some of them, they don't even see why you should let markets run. Markets are in the open. They are not run? enclosed areas. Yes, areas. yes. they say market, they are allowing markets to run. But you find in the sun. Huh? And they are in the sun. So A they lot have of these things. The the three. I don't know. They have to look at that. They say, why should. But look. It's not an enclosed area. Then when it's an enclosed area, the risk is graver. Mm. But they know this thing because a lot of them are very educated. But they know. it's just their own interests. It is that those who after. see those who see it as business. Those are the, because there are some pastors that, that do not encourage yes. that as and that's about like uh -huh. like um, like Bakari. That see people like that, like um, the other guy in we had those young people used to be towards the target. It's the uh, same thing. Yes. Desta, Desta, mm. Desta did his own. Oh, did, did his, uh, go, even online, Godalo, I, I heard what yes. Godalo said. So, yes. Pastor Etu, Godalo, yes, he said, no. if you need to close churches again, close churches. No, because. And I remember even know. when Trump was trying to use religion. Mm. Yeah. yeah? Mm -hmm. uh, is it T.D. Jakes or what, what yes. that pastor said? Mm. No, 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 no. He said, no, 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 I will not open my church. Because look, this thing is a, is, is, is a because choice the between people, logic. It's a community spread. The it's a choice between logic together. and mm. emotions. Yes. Mm. And like it's you. very dangerous now, very dangerous. So be, I'm, I'm really scared. I'm like to you. No, no, that. No, no, yeah. I'm scared too. I'm, I'm scared. Really scared. Every day I'm thinking. Because the hear stories every, every day. day. Every, every day. day. Every day. Every day. I have a friend that will tell me. You go to. Can't be too careful. I'm coming out from COVID or I have problems. You can't be too careful. You are feeling somehow. You are feeling that, oh, Today you feel weak. You'll be thinking maybe it's COVID. It's COVID. You yeah. know, if we could sacrifice and not go for your and not do your birthday, you that you are Major, the king, uh, Major, the king of celebrities. We are here to do his 60th birthday. So why is some people feel that they must do it? So people think they must do it. All right, Mayor Akibu, thank you, thank, thank you. you for being with us today. Thank you. And the master himself, Vicky O, Babaji, they call her the And for that's our us. offering today. Join us tomorrow for another episode of the program. You can also watch on YouTube. YouTube.com slash TBC News Nigeria. I'm Ayodili Uzubakum. Bye for now and please be safe.